Australia, the agricultural superpower of the world, where endless grasslands generate over 90 billion USD every year and feed global markets. But today, the nation is facing a painful paradox. Its greatest asset, the land, is deteriorating faster than ever before. After decades of intense farming, Australian soil has lost more than 60% of its organic matter. And each year, another 4 million hectares fall into severe degradation. And when the land collapses, it's not just the crops that disappear. Australia's food security and economic standing begin to tremble as well. In desperation, the country chased every possible solution to save its soil. Yet all attempts failed, until scientists discovered a clue hidden in something no one ever expected. Leftover sheep wool. So how did wool waste help turn the tide in the driest nation on Earth? TerranWorks will reveal everything in this video. Welcome to Australia, a country with more than 427 million hectares of agricultural land, a territory so vast it once seemed untouchable. For decades, it has been praised as the symbol of prosperity of the Southern Hemisphere's grasslands, where fields stretch endlessly to the horizon and livestock feed the world. But look closely, and beneath that greenery lies a very different story. Australia's land is dying and deteriorating so quickly that even Australians themselves are alarmed. In New South Wales, once the heart of the nation's agriculture, soil organic carbon levels dropped by an additional 3.1% in just 14 years, from 2006 to 2020. This means the soil is losing its ability to retain water, losing the nutrients that sustain microorganisms, and losing the very vitality that crops depend on. In harsher regions like Western Australia, the wind doesn't just carry dust, it carries away the soil of a farming industry being stripped bare. At times, wind erosion has removed up to 1.8 tons of soil per hectare per year. A layer of soil that takes hundreds of years to form disappears after only a few strong gusts. Across the continent, fields that once flourished are now turning a dry, burnt red, the color of desertification. More than 6 million hectares are classified as being at extremely high risk of erosion. Another 3.2 million hectares are collapsing from water-induced degradation. In Queensland, many farming households have had no choice but to abandon plots that once fed entire families because the soil structure has crumbled and can no longer hold enough moisture to sustain a growing season. But land is not the only thing falling into crisis in Australia. Parallel to the exhaustion of the soil, another industry once regarded as a national symbol is also struggling. The wool industry. Australia was once the world's wool kingdom, where merino sheep brought in enormous revenue with export values exceeding 4 billion USD each year. Yet over the past two decades, global demand has declined, factories have shut down, and raw wool prices have plummeted leaving thousands of farming households without enough profit to maintain their flocks. For the 2024 to 2025 period alone, national wool production is forecast to drop to just 279 million kilograms, more than 12% lower than the previous year. As a result, an estimated 200,000 tons of waste wool accumulate on farms each year, unwanted, unsellable, and almost useless. For farmers, it is a burden, Disposal is expensive, and if left to decompose outdoors, wool can take three to five years to fully break down. And then, from those seemingly useless piles of wool, a new direction began to emerge. Restoring soil with wool? It sounds absurd, but Australia has actually done it. When scientists brought samples of waste wool into the laboratory, they discovered that wool fibers have an almost perfect structure for soil regeneration. Each wool strand contains keratin scales that can hold 1.5 to 2 times its dry weight in water, while also creating tiny air pockets that allow oxygen to seep into the soil, something Australia's depleted soils desperately lack. But what surprised them most was the speed of change. In early trials in New South Wales, when a layer of wool just a few centimeters thick was spread over degraded soil, surface evaporation dropped by up to 35%, and soil moisture remained stable for nearly twice as long as with conventional organic mulch. After only a few months, soil microbial density, which had declined severely after years of cultivation, 
increased by 30 to 50 percent, kick-starting a new cycle of recovery. Wetter soil, faster formation of organic matter and crops beginning to regain a foothold. On abandoned fields in Queensland, where farmers once watched in despair as the earth cracked open from its inability to retain a single drop of water, experimental wool mulch created a surprising difference. After just one dry season of application, many households reported noticeably improved moisture retention, no more topsoil blown away by wind, and, most importantly, the recovery of soil structure. The land was no longer brittle red dust, but once again friable, grippable soil ready to be planted. But despite its many benefits, wool can't simply be dumped onto fields as is. Do you know why? The answer lies in the very structure of the fiber. When left unprocessed, it tends to clump into thick mats, decomposes very slowly, and makes it difficult for water to permeate the soil. To unlock its full potential, it must be treated properly. And this is exactly why wool pellets and wool compost were created. Wool pellets are a refined form of waste wool, ground up and compressed into small granules that can be mixed directly into the soil. Thanks to the keratin structure that expands and contracts with moisture, each pellet functions like a biological water battery. It absorbs water when the soil is wet, stores it inside, and gradually releases it as the soil begins to dry. This mechanism helps the soil retain moisture 25 to 40 percent longer, easing irrigation pressure in Australia's hot, arid environments. When wool pellets address the problem of moisture retention, wool compost plays the role of long-term soil nourishment. When sheep wool is composted together with microorganisms and organic matter, the keratin breaks down slowly, releasing a steady source of nutrients including nitrogen, sulfur, organic carbon, and trace minerals. As a result, soil microbial density, which had been severely reduced by degradation, increases again by 30 to 50 percent after just a few months, creating conditions for the soil to regenerate on its own. Wool compost also improves soil looseness and heat retention capacity, helping the soil better withstand prolonged heat waves. In many test regions, adding wool compost has helped increase crop yields by 12 to 18 percent without requiring additional chemical fertilizers. But the impact of sheep wool doesn't stop at the revitalized fields. As the soil begins to improve, another unexpected development occurs. The wool industry, once mired in crisis, suddenly rebounds in a way no one anticipated. The fibers that once cost money to dispose of have now become raw materials every factory wants. In 2024 alone, the state of Victoria saw more than 40 wool recycling startups emerge, creating around 2,500 new jobs in rural areas. From each ton of waste wool, workshops can produce nearly 900 kilograms of wool pellets, a material worth three times more than raw wool. Something once considered waste has now transformed into a product line worth millions of dollars, sustaining an entire new business ecosystem. However, Australia is not the only country that has recognized this potential. Just across the strait, New Zealand, home to more than 25 million sheep, is beginning to try the same approach. And the results are emerging faster than many expected. On coastal farms, where sandy soils are typically dry, compacted, and poor at retaining water, mixing in wool mulch has helped the soil maintain moisture 20 to 30 percent longer. On the basalt fields of the North Island, researchers have recorded the return of soil microorganisms just a few months after incorporating wool, the first sign that the land is beginning to breathe again. These positive signals quickly inspired the Kiwi business community. In Wellington, the startup Woolchemy developed a technology that turns waste wool into biopolymer granules with remarkable water holding capacity, opening up an entirely new application avenue. In Marlborough, the country's famous wine region, farmers use wool as a ground cover and have reduced irrigation needs by up to 25% during prolonged dry months. For New Zealanders, wool was once merely a textile material. But now, it is becoming a key to sustainable agriculture, much like what is happening in Australia. In the United States, where the sheep industry is only a fraction of that in Australia or New Zealand, wool plays a completely different role. So, what problem is the U.S. facing with wool? 
In fact, the issue isn't excess wool at all, but rather the needs of farmers themselves. They want to farm organically, yet lack stable, natural nutrient sources that can replace chemical fertilizers. It is in this gap that wool takes on an unexpected role as an organic fertilizer. On organic farms in California, Colorado, and Vermont, farmers have begun incorporating wool pellets into the soil, not to address drought as in Australia, but to create a slow-release nitrogen source that organic crops typically lack. And something surprising happened. After two months, soil analyses showed 15 to 22% less nitrogen leaching, while soil moisture stayed stable 18 to 25% longer compared with control fields. Thus, in the US, wool doesn't just improve soil, it helps protect the credibility of an entire agricultural sector. In an environment where every fertilizer must prove its origin, purity, and sustainability, wool pellets have become a rare solution that satisfies all criteria. It's no surprise that they have quickly become a new label of American organic agriculture. In California, many farms even print the phrase, grown with wool pellets, directly on their produce packaging, as a promise of quality and transparency that consumers increasingly value. But the story in the United States doesn't end with wool fertilizers. Once people began to see sheep as part of an ecological solution, new models emerged one after another. And the most striking of these is a model that sounds almost unusual. Solar grazing, sheep mowing grass for solar farms. In Texas, where solar fields stretch across hundreds of hectares, mowing grass beneath thousands of panels used to be an expensive task full of technical risks. But then people realized sheep do it better than any machine. And so solar grazing was born. Sheep clear low growing vegetation without damaging wiring or panel frames. Their manure adds natural nutrients to the soil, and the shade from the panels helps retain moisture, allowing grasses and soil microorganisms to recover. Many farms report reducing chemical fertilizers by up to 70% and maintenance costs by half compared with traditional mowing. Interestingly, the model works so well that the U.S. energy sector is now partnering directly with sheep farmers, something that was rare in the past. Flocks once raised only for wool or meat have become ecological maintenance workers, helping restore soils, boost biodiversity, and reduce CO2 emissions simply by eating grass, as they have done for thousands of years. In fact, in some states such as Colorado and California, people have found that sheep grazing solar fields can restore vegetation two to three times faster than conventional solar projects. From this, a mutually beneficial model has taken shape. Farmers gain extra income from grazing services, energy companies reduce operating costs, and the semi-arid desert ecosystem is revived right beneath the shimmering panels. This is the moment when agriculture, energy, and the environment, three fields once thought separate, unexpectedly merge, creating a future in which sheep not only sustain people, but help sustain the planet itself. What's remarkable is that this model is spreading faster than many expected. In just a few years, the number of solar grazing projects across the United States has tripled, giving rise to an entirely new service industry, professional grazing crews. These teams don't just bring sheep to eat the grass, they also advise on designing solar farms to suit sheep movement patterns, calculate vegetation density, account for breeding seasons, and even create weekly schedules for ecological maintenance. The results brought by sheep wool are not just Australia's success, they are a signal for a planet that is gradually drying out. Imagine the Sahel in Africa, where the Sahara expands by miles each year, being revived by a material once considered waste. Think of the Middle East, even drier than Arizona, being able to retain moisture for crops without billion-dollar irrigation systems. This story, therefore, does not belong only to Australia, New Zealand, or the United States. It reminds us that sometimes solutions to the planet's biggest problems come from the smallest materials. What do you think about this issue? Can a strand of wool really change the world? Share your thoughts in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss the next discoveries with Terran Works.